So today we're going all the way over to Kansas City, Missouri to hang out with my friend Judah Earl at JTL Studios. It's awesome. This video is of course brought to you by Sweetwater and this month I've been talking about pedals and amps and stuff. I actually got to go over to JHS pedals and play around with some Walrus audio stuff. I have some here and I was gonna do that here but I forgot them so the guys at JHS let me come over and play with them there. Check it out. So we've got the Walrus Audio D1 and the Juliana Chorus Vibrato. You need a cable. Going through the JHS amp. Then you need Addison to be in the shot. No, no, no. Oh, come on. Addison, or, is a, or Addison. Is, Addison is better on camera than I am. All right, so then. I, that's why I like the delays before the modulation. It's beautiful. Because then all the delays get. I actually got three pedals from Wallace Audio. I got the Ages, the Juliana, and the D1. They're all amazing. I put links to them down in the description. Thank you, Sweetwat, for sponsoring this video. Also, if you want to see the full JHS thing, go check it out on the membership. Link in the description. So the studio in Kansas City is amazing. My friend Jared runs the whole thing, and he's got a bunch of dudes that have really cool, amazing rooms. I actually got to go check out all of them, but today we're with my buddy Judah, who is an amazing composer, producer, writer, singer, musician, does everything, and he has this super minimalist studio. I'm not gonna waste too much time getting into it, but if you wanna follow him, I'll link his stuff in his projects down in the description. Let's go check it out. Let's check out your space, I'll follow you in here. All right, so this is uh, storage, sound lock, what was an ISO booth became a vast collection of, of instruments around the world. Yeah, dude. So how often are you reaching for these? You know, I try and learn a new instrument every year. My newest one, hailing from India, I believe. This thing's wild. And it has a bunch of strings under here. It's, it's not in tune. But this resonates the body. So when you bow the string, all of these strings resonate and you can tune it kind of however. Oh, cool. Uh, really, really beautiful instrument. Lately, I've been in the, the ones from China because I do a lot of Chinese dramas. I try and throw at least one to two instruments from China into the drama just because yeah. it creates that, I don't know, second dimension that you can really latch onto. Yeah, the mixing of actual instruments with the sample library. Oh, you got to, yeah. Yeah. That's... Well, especially because the cinematic genre in itself is is pretty open-ended so it's like when you throw an, an arhu or um some sort of flute or some sort behind a bed of strings it's like strings are like neutral cinematic and then when you throw a new instrument on there it's like it's already like the atmosphere is already set for you to explore a new territory yeah which is super cool wow this control room is so cozy Thanks, dog. You got the lights going, perfect for video. I didn't even have to set up any lights in here, which is amazing. So you you do some video stuff as well? Oh, well, I try and started a TikTok. It's a whole new experience. It's it's pretty challenging. What I like about it is you got to get to do something ridiculous. Yeah. And my latest one being, can I make music with bacon? What? <laughs> I know, I don't know what I'm doing. But oh, I realized, you sample, I sample sampled, bacon, yeah. But here's what I realized, when you cook bacon, and you listen to a vinyl. Bacon crackles at about a similar frequency as a vinyl. So I remix this old song, put your head on my shoulder. And then when I say shoulder, I throw bacon in there instead of a vinyl crackle, you know, I lo-fi everything out. Yeah. And it kind of worked. Nice. You know, so that's kind of what I what I do there, just kind of be ridiculous and, and uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, this is a super comfortable room. How long have you been in here? Uh, about two two years. Yeah, even the doors I, I noticed coming in, like these are really nice quality. Oh, it's great. Doors it, between all the rooms. It isolates really well. And since there's seven studios in the building, isolation is your crucial. Yeah. Because you're always fighting someone else's sub out there. You're like, all right, 
so I crank my sub. We have sub bottles all the time. What's going on behind these frames here? Oh, whisper walls. So the insulation behind these, so this isn't this isn't uh, drywall. And then, yeah, this is just for diffusion. That's so awesome. Whisper, and did this come with the space? Yes, and that, that was kind of a bonus. Great. They are kind of a pain to set up. So whisper wall, whisper wall, and just basic treatment. So I actually do all my tracking in here because it's treated well. And so anytime I bring in string players, I just literally set them down right next to me. Can nice. I just yeah, pop yeah. the mics or even all my vocals I just do in here? Because I like being with the musician yeah. in the same room, especially for something like cello where you're so focused on the, the intricacies and the little emotions. Yeah. And so I felt a disconnect when I'm talking with them through a piece of glass and you're at the talk back. Absolutely. I like to be right here with them. And so when you have a treated room, it, it really helps that process. Where this couch is in relation to where you're sitting, is like the perfect distance for client or artist or musician. Right, and if we're co-writing, it's not, it's close enough for a mic. So I literally, they just sit right there. I yeah. put the mic right in front of their face, slap some headphones on from my interface and it, yeah, it kind of works out nice. Even though I know we all love the big rooms, Sure. Um, sometimes like the the outboard island, that separation where you're like, hey, <laughs> yeah. uh, could you so, oh, uh, and then there's like that awkward, like, oh, I'll come up there and then sure. hover over you and, that whole thing. So yeah, I, I really like the the balance here. You know, it's still comfortable and it's not cramped. That's one thing I noticed about this space is it feels very minimalistic. Nice. You know, you sort of, it seems like you're using only what you need. To coin the phrase, that's exactly what we do over here. Could you just give me a little run through of your rig here? I see the old cheese grater. Wow, Am yeah, it's still kicking. Believe it or not, 2010. Hey, it's a pro to Logic, how Logic optimized for Mac really well. I mean, I'm yeah. my sessions are pretty large. Like many, many times I'll get up to 130, 140 tracks in my sessions. And the crazy thing is, is when you're in film, you don't really have the luxury of freezing tracks. Yeah. Um, because of last minute's edits. And so for 100 and, 130 tracks to be unfrozen yeah. and running plugins. Yeah. And I've had relatively minimal issues. It's it is a pro to logic how it's optimized with 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 Mac. What operating system are you running? Oh High Sierra. High Sierra. Wow. Yeah, yeah I know, right? Stone Ages. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, High Sierra, cheese grater, and you're using logic, so yeah. then you just have an interface, right? Interface and then I obviously I sum I sum afterwards. But most of my projects, you know, I stay I stay in the box because I don't mix most of my projects. Yeah. So a lot of well, a lot of what I'm doing is I stay in MIDI, I export the MIDI, I get the score ready for the yep. orchestra, and then they play it. There's a, a few microphones I like to use for different instruments, but I track it here and then I send it out to mix. And so yeah. that's kind of worked for my setup. Although there's you know there's always room to grow. It's really nice to be able to do that though, to not have to do both. Oh sure. Oh, it speeds up the process. Composing the recording and the mixing is. Especially with all the layers of approval, usually. Oh, for sure, yeah. Film. Well, because when you're cranking out, you know, sometimes one track a day, sometimes they're like, hey, we need the score by midnight. When the roles are so precise, you can really get content quick, which is what I really like about the industry I'm in. Explain the interface. You said you're doing also some conversion? Oh yeah, summing through my Dangerous 2. I have an artist project, my name Judah Earl, and anything I do myself, obviously, summing really helps create that, I don't know, just that saturation and that element where you really believe, I believe in the sound, where it has a little bit of a crunch and a glue. And yeah, anything I mix, 100% I'm doing something. It's pretty wild the difference when you hear it, when you A-B it back and forth. And, and that's so, with this dangerous two bus. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Just to bridge the gap into the analog world. But the rest of my plugins are, are pretty much in the box. I am a little more minimalistic with plugins as well, because my favorite thing is if you get a great sound, yeah. I'll spend more time dialing in the sound of the cello. Cello performance is 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 priority for me, and then once the emotion's there, and, and melodically, once the melody is good, I don't know, you can kind of let it be exposed, and you don't yeah. need to wet get it wet too much. You, you can just let it be what it is, and, and I guess yeah, I do take a minimalistic approach to mixing as well. Is this... A monitor thing, the central station here? Yeah, it's excellent. I have it set up right here. So I can just adjust my volume on the fly without even thinking about it. So I'm nice. working. I don't even need to look and I'm just kind of right here. Keys right here. This actually took me a little while to dial in because I've been composing for 10 years and would have tendonitis off and on. And then I noticed some composers would have everything over their knees. And previously I had my keys up here and I noticed the difference between this 
and this yeah. is huge if you work 10 to 12 hours a day. Having it dialed in where everything can sit over my knees. Bro, I can work 14 hours a day and no problem. Careful, any future clients watching this, they're gonna be like, hey, <laughs> man, you hey, said 14, 14 hours. <laughs> <laughs> what keyword is that though? Key station? Dude, right? <laughs> Key station 49, shout out. Keeping it yeah. alive. Yeah, it works fine. Mainly I use it because it's quick to transpose. I, I basically just stay in the key of C. Yeah, once you know that, basically it's like transpose, transpose, and then it's just like, my main thing is if I don't have to look at it, because I just, I yeah. like to keep oh, eyes yeah, here. Yeah. And so when I can just do stuff and not have to look, it's pretty much what's a win for me. The ideal situation is, is film up here, MIDI always to the left and session to the right. That's where I like it the most. I love having a full dedicated window to MIDI. That way you can just yeah. move something around really quick. And honestly, with the way Logic works, like I even I wouldn't even mind another screen for a mix window. So oh, if I yeah. could have four mix window, MIDI, session, and then film, that would be that would yeah. be the perfect world. I got a lot of heat. Shout out to the people who watch my videos because I got rid of my screen between the speakers and I moved it to the side for mixing. Wow. I just want to listen. I just look at my wall and I just hear it. No and way. I my faders and I go, oh, this is so much better. Wait, so you're telling me your eyes aren't glued to the <laughs> to the actual? <laughs> no, I I have the screen over here on a side desk, um, but then I come over here and I just. Hit play and I just listen. But the funny thing is, that's actually how it was created. Like, yeah, like consoles. Old, old school. Yeah. They didn't have computer screens. Tape machines stuff. over there. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, wow, throwback. I don't know if I'm that brave, but more power to you. <laughs> You've got a couple cool instruments in this room here. Oh, always. Lately, I've been into the classical. Classical mm. for film? I don't know, because when I play a standard acoustic, it creates a very specific emotion. Yeah. But classical having the nylon string. <laughs> It, you can kind of, or even doing darker stuff like. It makes the emotion more neutral versus niche. And so for me, classical with film really, really helps create a neutral palette. Then you can play with the intricacies of going, okay, fearful plus timid. Yeah. Then you can start layering the emotions. And so classical helps, helps me quite a bit with that. And also, if you want to take it hip hop to classical, you can really you know, lo oh big time lo-fi it out. Oh yeah. And then what's this thing behind you? I don't know how to pronounce it. A guchin. Unfortunately, I'm having trouble t getting it to stay in tune. You play <laughs> it like this, and then you you'll play it with your fingernail. Whoa. Beautiful, beautiful instrument. I use this as the theme song to one of the the villains in a recent Chinese drama. Basically, I kind of played it like an electric. I went. And then brought in a drum set. Oh, that's right. And you play bass too. Oh, bass is my primary, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's fun getting to incorporate different instruments in, in my workflow. Very unique instruments, uh, oh, especially for like Western music. Oh yeah. Well, that's my favorite part is the integration is is probably what I kind of live for. Okay, so you are using a sub. So what is that, the Care K over there? Actually, that's my uh, Focal sub. Oh. I had a Focal Twin Bs before these. You know what's funny is, I. As much as I love the Focals, I felt like they weren't quite as inclined to my sonic landscape that I am accustomed to. Especially in the cinematic world, yeah. I needed lows that were really warm. And if I was to describe them in cars, Focals are more BMW. Okay, like grippy, I like this. Go, mm, yeah. you know? If I had guitars in my workflow, Focals would be great, like more heavy. Oh, interesting. These would be more Lexus, like, Oh. Both luxury and both yeah. different. For me, game changer for film for these, especially how the lows, I have the sub really just to know what's yeah. under 30 Hertz, but um, the lows just really surround you and, and give you a nice hug. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Dyn Audios. Oh, they do a great I've never job. seen these before. Which model are these? Dude, you know what's funny? I just copied Zane from the studio. Oh, okay. I heard his and I was like, I want this. I want those. Yeah. And so I just kind of bought them. Tell me about this desk because I thought this was the output desk. <laughs> right. Well, I was like talking to my brother and I was like, can you build this? And he was like, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he like is a 3D designer. So he put it out. He designed the whole thing in 3D and it's like, this is what we do. And so this like is a day. the output platform design. I know. And the funny thing is right? they give you the designs on their website. Uh, we did make a little bit of a mistake here. Unfortunately, there's not enough rack space for. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We were like, well, 
Swing and a miss there. I'll get the output sidecar. We'll give him a shout the out. The output sidecar is cool. Yeah, yeah it's nice. pretty vibey. Yeah. What is this guy here? Oh, the Loughton. Okay, so this is Loughton. I keep hearing um, about this Loughton stuff. Oh, dude. Amazing microphone for vocals. I do a lot of vocals. I also have a pop project with another guy here at the studio, which I'm sure you'll hear about later. What's it called? Supercuts. Supercuts. Okay. Yeah. Spotify? Spotify, yeah. Just okay. Type in Supercuts, all one word. What I love about this microphone is the F creates this beautiful top end, which is so funny because in my mind, top end, I'm like, okay, you can add top end with EQ. Mm -hmm. But I've A beat it, dude. I've recorded with middle and I've recorded with, with it up mm -hmm. and you can't. It's one of those things where it creates the harmonic distortion that EQ just, you're not, you're not gonna find it it's in the saying, EQ. Yeah. It won't, it's gonna crunch the highs 6K and above in a way that will not work if you try to boost it with EQ. Do you know what um, model this is? I believe this is the uh, Atlantis. Atlantis, okay, nice. Oh. Good job. None of the engineers in any of my videos know what the model of the gear that they have. They're like, uh. <laughs> okay, I didn't know what speakers I have. <laughs> we'll give myself that one. I knew this one. Well, it's just an excellent for vocals. So anytime I'm doing vocals is usually this. This just fits nice, because I like to sing a little softer and breathier. Uh -huh. And this just takes what you want to do and expounds on it. Yeah, huge fan of this one. Okay, and then this guy over here, Neumann. Neumann, yeah, I use this guy primarily for um, recording acoustic. Okay. Because the tube, well, it has the, the rest of it's right there. You plug into that Power guy. Supply. Yeah, the way it crunches acoustic, way, way warmer than that. And so having, having both to pull from at the tip of your fingers is really helpful. Because a lot of times in film, you're making split decisions because of deadlines and stuff. And so you're like, all right, quick, 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 and then track yeah. and then uh, game over. So this guy I found, I know the boundaries, I know the landscape, so I've used it enough to know, okay, sweet, acoustic, cello, kind of warmer instruments where yeah. I want a warmer tone, brighter, punchier pop music, I'll hit my Latin. What, you're, what you're model is this? M147. Oh, okay, so it's like, a, okay, yeah, type M147. Yeah, great, I just saw it in the live room and I was like, you know what, I think that belongs in my room. <laughs> <laughs> do you do like, other outside work outside of composing or your artist stuff? Well, my time is split 50-50 between writing orchestral music and writing pop music. And my orchestral music is split 50-50 between Netflix and my own personal project for Musicbed. Every video, the music that is playing right now underneath this video is from yeah. Musicbed. Score. And Musicbed is so good to their artists. I mean, and they kind of help make your dreams come true. Yeah. Like, I really enjoy writing for them. Yeah. So between the Netflix stuff and then between Musicbed, it, it keeps you pretty busy. But the pop stuff is also for Musicbed. So there's Supercuts and then there's your... Jude person. Earl. Yeah. Jude Earl, okay. And then is, are both of those on the Musicbed? Yeah. Okay, so you're looking for some help with some of the co composing work, right? Yeah. Primarily. Always. Notation and, maybe... and possibly scoring as well. Just looking for the right fit. We're in Kansas City right now, so if there's anyone in Kansas City who's looking to learn more about that and perhaps wants to reach out to you for an internship or Please. to yeah to shadow you or whatever, where can they reach out to you? Yeah, just we'll just throw my email down there in the chat. All right, cool. Well, I'll link the uh, the two music projects, Instagram and email, and uh, thank you for letting me do a video and of course. Uh, check out your rooms and uh, anyone has any questions leave them down below go follow Judah and we'll see you in the next one sweet see ya